Hello, it's Adam here from the Google Docs product forum here to talk to you about array formulae and the rather novel way that Google Sheets deals with and applies array formulae and how we can leverage that to perform pretty common tasks in our spreadsheets. Uh, Google Sheets is of course the spreadsheet application in the Google Docs suite. Uh, today I'll be specifically talking about the new version of Sheets. Another application is the form application, which uh, a lot of people use to uh, populate their spreadsheets with a, a nice form interface. And a very common task that's asked quite a bit on the form is how can I apply a calculation to uh, row by row down a sheet of form submissions that's constantly expanding over time. And an array formula provides a trick for making this work. So we've got a form set up for Ted here. Ted's a good mate of mine. He's a massive fan of penguins. Um, I don't know if this is a Linux thing or whether he's simply just always been fond of penguins. I mean, I could understand the latter, who isn't fond of penguins. Uh, and he's amassed thousands of these penguins, over, uh, toy penguins over the year that he's decided to sell off. He wants to fund a trip to Australia because I told him about the colony of little penguins down on Phillip Island off the coast of Melbourne down here. So we've got this form set up where people can pledge how many for, uh, penguins they want to order off Ted. I'm going to um, order 10 toy penguins at the very reasonable price of $3 each, submit. And this will land in our form submission sheet here. So let us say we wanted to perform a calculation whereby we calculate the revenue for each order as it arrives. So I'm going to create a column over here with the uh, heading of revenue. We shall shade that a different colour. I think it's probably a good idea to uh, to uh, differentiate which columns is the raw data being populated with the form submissions and which column is the calculation column. I should also add that uh, the user will have to determine for their use case whether they actually want to do this calculations on a separate sheet. If you've got a form that has uh, tons of questions, a lot more than this, or if you've got a lot of pro um, processing to do with these calculation columns, it may be a good idea to keep these calculations on a separate sheet. For the purpose of this tutorial, uh, it's just going to be easier for me to do it on the same sheet, but I think it's perfectly reasonable to do it on the same sheet if you've got a fairly simple case like this. As I'll show later, you can also apply sorts to this data, uh, which will work successfully on these calculated columns as well. So the old fashioned way of doing it would be simply to do a single formula referencing this cell here. So C2 multiplied by 3, confirm with enter, and we have the revenue for Ziggy's order. Then we would, again in the old in the old days, fill that down with something like control D. Because we're using formulas with relative references, that's going to um, fill successfully down the column and, and apply it row by row. So uh, D2 will reference C2, D3 will reference C3, D4, C4, and so on down the column. And we'd like to think that because we've uh, filled that formula all the way down, that future form submissions will be populated successfully with this formula. Uh, the trouble is they won't. And to demonstrate this, uh, Yogi arrives and he decides that he wants to order eight penguins submit. And we can see that Yogi's form submission has landed successfully, but the formula that was in D6 has actually been pushed down to D7, so we're not getting that formula calculating on that submission automatically. Now, I think the best way to think of it is when form submissions arrive, it's perfectly akin to inserting a row in, this, in the sheet itself. So if I was to insert a row uh, below Yogi's here, again, it would just keep pushing this formula down and down. We'll never have these uh, individual formulae being applied to the form submissions themselves. So as I said at the start, the trick is to use an array formula. To do that, we start out the same way. We reference the, the top cell in the range, C2, and I uh, then type colon C. And what we have here is an open-ended range where we're not specifying a row number on the second C in the range reference. Uh, Google Sheets very conveniently outlines the range we're referring to, but what it fundamentally means is um, every cell from the second column, the second row in the C column, down to the last column, wherever that may be, whether it's down to the last row, I should say, uh, whether it's row 13 or 113 or row 500, 
C2 colon C will reference the entire column down to the very last row. Now, if we were to multiply by that by 3, that in itself won't populate down the column because we haven't told Google Sheets that we're, we're applying an array calculation that we want filled all the way down to the end. So to do that, in edit mode, I think the simplest way is just to hit Control shift enter That will wrap uh, C2 column 3 multiplied by 3 in the array formula function. And this will tell Google Sheets we don't just want to multiply the row that we're in by 3, we want to row, uh, multiply every row by three and then produce an output that's filled down the entire column. So we confirm that with enter and as you can see it works. If we were to test that out with another form submission, so Jill arrives and decides she wants to order nine, submit, and you can see it works. Uh, Jill's form submission has arrived and that calculation has been applied. Ted himself mentioned it in a, in a recent excellent tutorial how to mask values like this, the zero. The zero is simply the calculation being applied to rows that have not yet received a submission. And we can do that with an if statement. So we apply if len a2 colon a is bigger than zero, then apply the calculation. If not, do nothing. So if has three arguments, the first is the condition, the second is the, con uh, the output if the condition is true, and the third is the output if the condition is false. Now, len simply means how many characters are in each cell. So if there's any more than zero characters, uh, uh, the if statement will evaluate to true and the calculation will be applied. If, as is the case with these cells, there is zero characters, uh, we'll get nothing in the output. Uh, just a little trick. Uh, if uh, the, the first argument of the if will automatically be coerced to true if it's a non-zero value. So we can actually delete that bigger than zero part and it will uh, have the same effect. And we can see now that uh, there's nothing being populated in rows eight down where there's no form submissions yet. Now we can make this even more robust by moving this formula into the frozen row up here. So in other words, make the formula also populate the header for the column as well as the calculated data. So to do that, I'll just copy this formula in edit mode. We'll delete that column and we'll replace it with the, the formula. But what we're going to do is wrap this in another if statement which will reference the row numbers. So if the row of A a, and what this refers to is the entire A column equals 1, then we'll populate our header. If not, we'll just apply the calculation as we did previously, but we'll have to change these references to the whole column references now. So A column A and C column C. We close off that second if statement, apply enter, and you can see it's still giving us the same output, but we have no formulae down here now. It's in the, this frozen header row. Uh, this just makes it a bit more robust, and it actually um, opens up uh, the use of a sort in the in the um, in the spreadsheet in the sheet itself. So uh, sorts, as you know, will not affect any frozen rows. So we can, for example, sort the entire sheet from Z to A in, of the A column, which will reverse the order of the timestamps, so make the most recent timestamp up the top. As you can see, uh, Jill has been moved up to the top. Ziggy, who was originally the first um, submission, has been moved down to the bottom. But it hasn't altered this formula up here, and all the calculations are still respecting the, the same run. So uh, it's, it's a great way that we can apply calculations uh, in the new sheets at least and not having our calculations upset when we pr provide, uh, apply sorts on the data. So hopefully this gives you an insight into how array formula, which on the surface can appear a little bit complex, how they can be applied um, down a sheet of form submissions. And thanks for listening.